I'm here because science has helped me get to space and see the planet from the vantage point to cognitively shift my brain to say, all of these systems are nothing but data and science that we must ensure that we continue to study so that we'll have a civilization in the next 100 years. They say that people who have been in space and seen the planet, there has been a shift in consciousness where they see the planet as a whole and they don't see the division so much between countries and people. Was that the case for you? It was. It's called the orbital shift. It was this cognitive shift that happens when you're going around the planet every 90 minutes, seeing a sunrise and a sunset every 45 minutes. And when I had dinner with Peggy Whitson, who's up there now, the first female commander, Russians and Germans, who people used to fight against, it, it just breaks down all those barriers. And you see togetherness. You are going to Afghanistan and Iraq and these places, and it's beautiful, and there's no boundaries or borders. And it makes you want to work together better when you come home. And do you think we need to work together on this crisis called climate change? Well, we need to pull together on every crisis that's going on, but especially climate change. I mean, I saw, you know, deforestation. I saw Amazon burning. I saw all these things going on up there that have to do with not ignoring the data. And we got to look at the, the science. We look at glaciers that are calving the size of Manhattan. And there has to be systems that are going on that are causing this. And I believe it's, it's climate change. Human caused climate change. Yes, definitely human caused climate change. And then, what do you, what would you say then to those like the, the government or people rolling back regulations and also cutting research and and data collection on science? Well, what was so disheartening is when the new administration came in and the data and the websites for EPA and for NASA, these these organizations that have this repository of information that's showing all these trends were deleted, were, you know, were, were closed. And I think once we start hiding things and once we start putting our head in the sand, acting like things aren't happening, it will be the demise of our civilization. So they're talking about increasing NASA's funding for space exploration, but of course decreasing funding to other areas like planetary science and anything related to climate change. What, what do you think? Well, you know, we've built satellites at NASA that have looked at the oceans and looked at the temperatures of the oceans and looked at CO2 emissions, looked at all these different things. And that's our Earth science budget. And when that Earth science budget was zeroed out, that's saying that these, that's saying that our planet is not important because these are all things to monitor the health and well-being of this, of this spaceship Earth. And so once you do that, we're finding that you're not going to be able to tell what the trends are, what the temperature changes are, or what's affecting these different systems on our planet. And I, you, you have to, you can't hide the data. In 1968, Apollo 8 was going around the moon and saw this Earthrise picture. And they took a picture of it, and that picture helped fuel the Environmental Protection Agency. It helped it fuel the environmental you know, movement. And so we're coming up on 2018, which is the 50th anniversary of Earthrise. What's going to happen in 2068? 100 years from that iconic picture, are we going to have fish that we can eat out of the ocean? Are we going to be able to swim in the ocean? What is going to be there? So we need to course correct now to make sure that we get the data so we know what's happening. So my grandchildren's 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 grandchildren who are born in 2068 can have a planet to safely thrive on.